This is Gospel for Grampian and it's the Community Elements Show for Friday the 8th of March. One of the subjects that uh, Brian covered in his good news today was the subject of first aid and we heard how a boy leapt straight in and was able to help his little sister with her issue of having trapped a finger in the door, he was able to use a compress, he was able to stem the bleeding. And that's something that really each one of us could do. Yet, how many of us are actually confident enough to get straight in and do that? Particularly when we are faced with, for example, a baby who is under one year old and unresponsive and breathing. What do you do? What should a parent or indeed anyone else do? Well, the first of all, if your baby is not responding or if their baby's not responding and you think they're unresponsive, try to see if they react by gently tapping or flicking the sole of their foot. If they do not wake up or respond to you, they're likely to be unresponsive. So check to see that they're still breathing normally. Then, Call 999 or 112 immediately, especially if the infant has a known heart condition. Next step, open the airway. And to do that, place one hand on the baby's forehead and tilt the head gently back. Then place one fingertip of your other hand on the point of the baby's chin. Step 3. Check for breathing. Look, listen and feel for normal breathing, such as chest movements, sounds of breathing or breaths on your cheek and breaths on your cheek. Do this for no more than 10 seconds. If they're breathing, then place them in the recovery position, in the baby recovery position. Cradle them in your arms with their head tilted downwards and this will keep their airway open and stop them choking on their tongue or breathing in and eat vomit. Now, you've already asked for help, but also do call for help. 999 or 112 for medical emergency can help uh, taking them with you as you do this. Until help arrives, check the baby is still breathing normally. If they stop breathing normally at any time, call 999 or 112 straight away and give the baby CPR, which is a combination of chest compressions and rescue breaths. Now, let's go to actually doing this and we'll find out how you can actually do this. Obviously, if you're working on an adult, uh, you would be doing it rather more... uh, vigorously but we'll cover that in just a moment now st john ambulance who have produced these guidelines they have a website and we'll make sure that the website is included in our community elements uh, post that we're putting on our website and you'll also get this as a podcast So if you need to do child CPR for an unresponsive and not breathing child, so if you've checked it over and you found it to be unresponsive by carrying out those things, then if someone is with you, get them to call 999 or 112 for emergency help. If you're on your own, you need to give one minute's worth of CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation before you call for help. This involves giving the chest compressions and rescue breaths to keep the child's circulation going. To perform CPR on a child, kneel down beside the child on the floor, level with their chest. Give five initial rescue breaths before starting before starting a sequence of 30 chest compressions and two rescue breaths. To give a rescue breath, ensure that the airway is open. Pinch their nose firmly closed. Take a deep breath and seal your lips around their mouth. Blow steadily into the mouth until the chest rises. 
Remove your mouth and allow the chest to fall. Repeat this four times more. Now give 30 chest compressions. Place the heel of one hand toward the end of their breastbone and the center of their chest and making sure that you keep the fingers off the ribs. Lean over the child with your arms straight, pressing down vertically on the breastbone and press the chest down by at least one third of its depth. Release the pressure without removing your hand from their chest and allow the chest to come back up fully. This is one compression. Repeat this 30 times at a rate of about twice a second or the speed of the song staying alive. Now give two rescue breaths. Release the pressure without removing your hand from their chest and allow the chest to come back up fully. Remember, by the way, to call for emergency help after half a minute if you're on your own. Carry on giving 30 chest compressions followed by two rescue breaths for as long as you can or until help arrives. If the child starts breathing normally, stop CPR and put them in the recovery position. What you might also consider doing is when help does arrive, such as the paramedics, then let them know what you've been doing and, if you can, talk to the patient talk to the baby talk to the child talk to the adult say who you are and that you are there to help them until the paramedics arrive hearing is one of the last things to go so if you can do that that would be a great help uh, and you never know you may well save uh, a life and just each and every person has an opportunity to save a life now the website for this is www.sja-org.uk. That's www.sja-org.uk. And uh, we'll make that available so that you can uh, have a little look at what to do and how to do it. In this community element, we're also covering what happens when, for example, a person has cardiac arrest and uh, indeed heart attack. Let's get uh, the terms clear first of all. Cardiac arrest happens when the heart stops pumping effectively leading to a collapse, a loss of responsiveness and the person ceasing to breathe. This is a medical emergency. A heart attack is what happens when there's an obstruction of the blood supply to part of the heart muscle and leading to pain or if a large part of the muscle is affected, the heart could stop pumping effectively. It may lead to cardiac arrest. Urgent medical attention is needed in an attempt to improve the blood flow to the muscle. Now, there are a number of other things that could actually occur. Angina is a pain in the chest caused by a reduced supply, blood supply to the heart muscle itself. It is not yet a cardiac arrest and it is not yet a heart attack, though it could feel like that. Now there's other things that could make it feel like that. Shock is what happens when there's a disruption to the blood supply to part of the brain leading to a change in function. Inability to speak, uh, use an arm or a leg. If a large part of the brain is affected, the person may lose responsiveness or have a seizure. Urgent medical attention is needed in an attempt to pr improve the blood flow to the brain. Any one of these situations will cause a severe effect on the person concerned or indeed those watching. So it's important to be calm. Here's what to do in the case of a heart attack. First, you need to know what you're dealing with. A person having a heart attack will have a continuous pain in the chest which could spread to the jaw, the neck or the arms. A pale skin, a rapid and weak pulse, perspiration and sweating. First of all, call 999 or 112 for medical help and say you think that someone is having a heart attack. Or indeed get someone else to do this for you if you can. Then help them and move them to the most comfortable position. The best position is on the floor, leaning against a wall with the knees bent and the head and shoulders supported. 
This should ease the pressure on their heart and stop themselves hurting themselves if they collapse. Now it says here, give them 300 milligrams of aspirin. Of course, this may not be possible if available and they're not allergic and tell them to chew it slowly. Be aware that they may develop shock. Now shock does mean not mean emotional shock, but it is a life-threatening condition which can be brought on by a heart attack. Keep checking their breathing, their pulse and level of response, so keep talking to them. If they lose responsiveness at any point, open their airway, check their breathing and prepare to treat someone who has become unresponsive. You may need to do CPR. Now, as I said, we will be making the uh, website available. That's sja.org.uk. That's sja.org.uk. Let's have a little look at what to do if a person does have a cardiac arrest or indeed shock. Now, a cardiac risk, uh, arrest, the sudden loss of responsiveness, no breathing, no movement or other signs of life. Call 999 or 112 immediately and ask for medical help. And also ask a bystander to do it if you can, so you can start doing CPR sooner. Make sure you communicate with a specific person so that no time is lost while people hesitate. Now, if there is a defibrillator available, then do go and grab it or get a specific person to get it for you and switch it on. You will then get a series of visual and verbal prompts, which you should follow until the ambulance arrives. Now, this is Gospel for Grampian. It's Gospel Community Radio for North Scotland, engaging, equipping and enabling communities to live life to the full with Christ Jesus at the centre. In this community element, we've been covering uh, indeed what happens and what to do in cases uh, where a person is unresponsive. A person may have fallen, they may have had a heart attack or a cardiac arrest. Now, the last thing we're going to be covering is indeed shock. We did mention that one. Shock, not to be confused with emotional shock, but it does mean the brain cells don't get enough oxygen to enable them to work properly, which can lead to damage of the vital organs like the brain and the heart. Shock can be caused by anything that reduces the flow of blood, including heart problems such as heart attack or heart failure, severe internal or external bleeding, a loss of body fluids, from dehydration, diarrhoea, vomiting or burns as well, severe allergic reactions and severe infection. So what to do in cases of shock? In shock, a person may have paleness of face, that's pallor, cold clammy skin, fast shallow breathing, fast weak pulse, yawning or sighing, confusion and loss of response even in extreme cases. Now, if they are showing any signs of shock, lay them down with their head low, their legs raised and supported to increase the flow of blood to their head. Do not raise an injured leg. Call 999 or 112 for medical help and say you think they are in shock and explain uh, what you think caused it. Loosen any tight clothing around the neck, the chest or the waist to make sure it doesn't constrict the blood flow. Fear or pain can make the shock worse by increasing the body's demand for oxygen. So while you wait for help, it's important to keep them warm, comfortable and calm. Do this by covering a coat or blanket, comforting and reassuring them. Keep talking to them. Keep checking for their breath, pulse and level of response. And if they become responsive at any point, open their airway, check their breathing and prepare to treat someone who has become unresponsive. This is Gospel for Grampian and we'll be covering some first aid situations and what to do in them. We've taken the advice from SJA, I believe, .org .uk, and that website will be available from the our own website as a link. Keep it coming here on Gospel for Grampian.